Welcome to the Shooting Show, brought to you in part by Gun Owners of America, Larry Pratt, Executive Director, and by Shooting Times Magazine, and also by Springfield Armory, Wesson Firearms, the United States Practical Shooting Association, Dillon Precision, Ducks Unlimited, the International Handgun Metallic Silhouette Association, Clark Custom Guns, Shotgun News, Fort Knox, Chief AJ, Wyoming Arms, and a number of other good friends and supporters. Hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of The Shooting Show. We're brought to you in part by Gun Owners of America and Shooting Times Magazine and a number of other good friends and very fine sponsors. We want to tell you how glad we are to have you with us today. We've heard from so many people around the country in support of our program, and we do appreciate your calls and letters. Please, there's something you can do for us. Call your local cable company and tell them that we're free to local cable, and we've left some spots for their advertisement, and this will help us reach more viewers than we are already. We have some cable companies already taping and running our show, and we'll be very pleased to have as many as we can get. So. Let's get the shooting show underway. Friends, this is the excellent Springfield Armory model 1911-A1 in 45 ACP. And this is one of the very best handguns. It's a classic. Uh, this particular model handgun has been in the U.S. military service for longer than any other gun, certainly that I'm aware of. Uh, they're excellent in quality. They're accurate. They're easy to shoot well, and they're very economical for what they are. This particular model has been modified very slightly by uh, Jeff Cooper's armory out in Gunsight uh, in Paulden, Arizona, and it's just been slicked up a little bit, and of course, to be one of uh, Colonel Cooper's conversions, you have to start with an absolute top quality handgun to begin with. It's like any other uh, government model, 45, it holds seven in the magazine in 45 ACP, and of course this gun is available in some other calibers, but uh, it holds seven in 45 ACP. It loads just like any other semi-automatic handgun. The magazine goes in the, in the base. To load the gun, we pull the slide back like so, and let it go. Don't let it ease forward, let it go. And then apply the safety. And now let's test fire this excellent Springfield Armory 1911A1 and 45 ACP on these steel targets. The excellent Springfield Armory 1911A1, 45 ACP. Power and accuracy. All right, friends, let's shoot the excellent Springfield Armory P9 and again, this is the factory comp gun. It has a compensator, and these uh, two chambers out on the end, this is, of course, on the end of the barrel, and it keeps the muzzle down. It enables you to reacquire your target easier and faster. So uh, this is a tremendous gun. It's available in 9mm, 40 caliber, and 45 ACP after the first of the year. Uh, this one has a hard chromed frame. Uh, with a blued slide, it has terrific sights on it, and it's really a superior piece of workmanship. It has the uh, fancy hardwood grips that are very finely checkered. It also has an extended uh, magazine release, so you can change your magazines a little quicker, as well as a beveled magazine well. The Springfield Armory P9 holds 15 rounds in the magazine in 9mm chambering. It's extremely easy to shoot, is accurate and is an excellent value for the money. Let's shoot some steel targets now and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's fine. We also want to mention some of the other Springfield Armory products, the fabulous M1A rifle, which is the absolute ultimate in long range power and accuracy in a semi-automatic rifle, and also the M6 Scout, which was originally a survival gun concept. It's an over and under 22 long rifle on the top and 410 shotgun on the bottom. So please, wherever Springfield Armory products are sold, take a look at them. You won't be disappointed. 
You know, the best planned hunt can be ruined by the smallest thing, like ending up with the wrong ammunition. Hi, I'm Grits Gresham. Truth is, choosing the right load can make all the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful hunt. So, what's the best way to match your ammo to the game you're after? That's easy. Take the guesswork out of ammo selection. To make sure you get the right stuff when it comes to ammunition, see the real pro in your community. When I was six years old and living in Florida, my Aunt Dot went to England as a nurse uh, during World War II. Before she left, she promised to bring me back a machine gun, uh, and I was bitterly disappointed when she came home without it. She swears to this day that she had the gun, uh, but they took it away from her when she went to get on board the ship. I might be a little older now, but not much has changed. I still enjoy machine guns, and I know that thousands of others out there do too. What you're about to see is the fun, the history, and some straight talk about one of the most misunderstood pieces of engineering in America. We'll be showing and shooting the widest array of machine guns ever assembled, from the oldest to the very latest. We'll talk about some of the developments in engineering, the mistakes, twists, and turns the gun has taken. If you've never shot a machine gun, or even if you have, we think you're about to embark on a fascinating journey that will include a grand finale worth waiting for. Friends, I think we've probably got your attention by now. This is part of the excellent machine gun magic tape from Dillon Precision Products. So get a pencil so you can be sure and get this number at Dillon Precision Products. This is one of the greatest action tapes involving guns uh, that I have ever seen. And believe me, if you don't buy another tape for the next two or three years, you ought to get this one. So call them at 1-800-421-421. 7632. And we're going to continue with a couple of more excerpts out of this tremendous tape. No one's suggesting that machine guns are for everyone, any more than a Formula One race car is for everyone. They're exotic pieces of machinery. They're expensive to buy and expensive to shoot. The least expensive belt fed machine gun will cost $3,000, whereas an exotic piece like a minigun may go for as much as $30,000. Machine guns are clearly the best behaved of all classes of firearms. How well behaved are they? Federal firearms agent Jack Killeran told us, quote, since 1934 there has been an insignificant number of machine guns used in crime. It doesn't amount to a handful, unquote. You would think this kind of record would satisfy those who favor more gun regulation, but it doesn't. Despite the evidence, even more restrictions were added in 1986. The Firearm Owners Protection Act states, no machine gun made after May 18, 1986 can be sold to a private citizen. That cuts out citizen ownership of new guns made in the future. All this regulation, by the way, when regulators admit criminals don't even want machine guns. Shooting exotic weapons at the moving targets is a lot of fun, but the first thing we had to do was figure out a place we could do it safely. Uh, it took us a uh, better part of five years to find a place that was this open. This is an area where there is really not even a dirt road to give access uh, uh, to our shooting area back here. Downrange, we have almost seven miles of uh, clear uh, terrain that's bordered by the mountains. Even at that, it would be possible for a hiker to come in. So before we ever start to shoot and before the sun goes down and we can really uh, secure the area, we fly the whole thing low level with the helicopter. We strongly advise against anyone else doing this sort of shooting unless they have taken the same precautions we have. There, there are very few places in the United States that offers this sort of depth of range to allow you to do this safely.
Friends, you've just seen a few short minutes of the terrific machine gun magic tape from Dillon Precision. It's an action-packed documentary about sport machine gun shooting that explodes the media myths about full auto arms. So pass the ammunition and hold on to your seat and order this tape from Dillon Precision Products, 7442 East Butheris Drive, Scottsdale, Arizona. The zip code is 85260 or call them at 1-800-421-7632. Call 1-800-942-TAPE for the largest selection of firearm videos in the world. Shotgun, rifle and pistol videos for gun owners, competition shooters, military, law enforcement, and self-defense enthusiasts. For a free catalog delivered to your home, call now. 1-800-942-TAPE. Mail order video offers the largest and best selection of rifle, pistol, and shotgun videos in this complete full-size catalog. Call now for your free copy. 1-800-942-8273. And now we're going to pause for one minute for your local cable company or station identification. One way of safeguarding this revolver so a child or anyone who might pick it up absolutely cannot fire it is to take a regular garden variety padlock right here take a padlock and put it through the top strap of the revolver and you can lock it in place and you'll notice the cylinder will not close and since the cylinder is out there's no way There's a bullet, absolutely no way that that can be fired. That's right. Even if even if the bullets were uh, in the cylinder, you can't no get it up there to fire. Be fired. Another way of safeguarding a revolver is putting the lock through the trigger guard behind the trigger and the same drill. Of course, remember to close the lock. But you because the lock's in the way the hammer it, cannot come back far enough to cock itself. It jams the whole mechanism. That's right, it jams the whole mechanism. You need to be sure that your lock uh, is big enough to keep the trigger from coming back. Uh, so it will jam the mechanism. That's the whole point. So these are a couple of ways of making a revolver safe. And we cannot talk too much about safety. A lot of people now, a lot of single mothers who are heads of households are buying guns don't know really uh, a lot about how to use them and they have small children and this is something that we have got to address we want to prevent accidents the, the thing to do is not have an accident and say I'm sorry let's let's prevent accidents let's lock the doors at night let's prevent the accident again friends we'll talk about one more time a reminder we never ever under any circumstances point the gun at anything that we cannot afford to lose under any circumstance. That means no part of our body, no neighbor, no pet, no television set, nothing. Crystal chandelier or anything else. <laughs> if you want to lose it, point the gun. If you want to keep it, don't point the That's gun right. at it. That's under, exactly. Under any circumstances. Under any circumstances. Because, as we've said before, accidental discharges do sometimes happen. And don't, you don't notice, we don't walk around the range with our finger on the trigger. We walk around, when we handle guns, we keep our finger out of the trigger guard. Right. We never put our finger on the trigger for any reason until we're ready to shoot. Now then, let's talk about safeguarding a semi-automatic handgun. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the magazine. 
I'll give that to you, Tom. Okay. And we're going to check, we're going to pull the slide back and be sure it's unloaded. And it is. But there's not a round up in the chamber. That's right. Look in the chamber because this is a mistake that some people make. They'll take the magazine out of the gun. They'll forget one about that left, bullet in the chamber. One bullet in the chamber. And some semi-automatics have magazine safeties that would prevent the gun from firing with one in the chamber, and others don't. Do not. So we're going to plan on none of them having magazine safeties. That's so, the safest way. That's right. Because our sport is such a wonderful, great family sport. It's such a, a great thing for, for a fellowship and camaraderie. Shooting is really a wonderful sport, and that's how we're going to keep it that way, by being safe, 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 and then we're going to keep it safe. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the slide back on this gun one way time, as, as you and I have talked many times, you can safeguard a semi-automatic handgun against misuse is take a cable lock. And this is a, uh, they're easily uh, obtainable. You can find one down at your local hardware store mm -hmm. or one of the discount stores. This one's made by Mossberg and it works really well for our purposes. You can put the cable down through the opening in the slide and let it come out the bottom of the magazine well and see you can lock it closed, which we're gonna do. And you'll notice that now the gun the slide cannot go forward all the way. This gun is completely out of operation. There's no way this gun can be fired until you that take cable. the cable out. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And you know, Tom, we should mention, we talk about loaded guns, not pointing. And we don't, misfires and all of that. But we don't point unloaded guns. That is correct. Whether the gun's loaded or not, if you just never point it, period, you'll never have that accident. That's right. That's a good point that you bring up there. It really is because we, through some mistake or fluke or whatever you want to call it, somehow, some slip, somehow, some slip there, might, there might have been a shell left in when we thought it was unloaded. And these are the, are the accidents that sometimes hurt mm. people as they think the gun's unloaded. A gun is always a gun. It's always loaded. Whether it's got bullets in it or not, that's how to treat it. It's always loaded. So if we just follow some Absolutely. simple rules here, will be so much better off down the road. Another way to safeguard a semi-automatic handgun, again, we've pulled our slide back here. Get a shot of that. And we take our cable lock and we're going to put it down straight the barrel. Down, straight down the barrel. Just put it right down the barrel. And then... Flip it, flip it around and lock it. Flip it around here. Up. And lock it in place right here. And again, there's no way this gun can be fired as long as that cable is in the barrel like that. It is, in fact, locked up. So again, a couple of safeguards. Uh, we just have to protect our children. And you know, a lot of adults, a lot of adults don't know proper gun handling rules. There's a lot of adults that just have never handled a gun and they just know it's a gun and they think it's just something they see on Western movies and That's right. shows. And That's right and they'll get a hold of it and know nothing about the operation of it and uh, they'll hit something a certain way and that, that's when it'll go off and shoot something. That's right. Well, you know, friends, down here on the range, as normal, you'll see I do have my eye protection on, which is so important, and my ear protection. We never come down here without it, not one time, never, something we do every time. I cannot stress that enough. We must save our sight and hearing. However, uh, we may not need Ear, uh, hearing protection for this gun. This is a toy. <laughs> and, uh, these rubber band shooters, I think uh, eye protection would not be a bad idea. Boy, I would have loved to have had that back in school. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a toy, but this is not. This is the Crossman 357 model pellet gun. And we want to thank the good folks at Crossman for loaning us a couple of pellet guns, in fact, because we think this will be an important part of our program. We must remember that our children need some experience in shooting uh, uh, pellet guns, air guns, BB guns, whatever you want to call it, in order to bring them into our sport. But this gun also has another use. It works like a regular revolver. You can practice 
indoors if you have the proper uh, bullet trap and certainly use eye protection uh, anytime you shoot a pellet gun or anything like this but uh, also you can use it in your backyard because it makes almost no noise at all they're extremely accurate for uh, reasonable distances again for a pellet gun and this gun let me show you how it works it breaks open in the middle and you have a disc here with six pellets placed in already simple as can be you put them in the gun on the little post there it pivots on and now you're ready to shoot uh, this little revolver also has an excellent safety feature it has and let's see if we can get this it has a push safety and this will be especially useful around children uh, because this will make the the gun safe from being fired like any other firearm so that's really not a bad idea at all so it, you push it on and push it off I want to remind you that uh, this Crossman gun uses a CO2 powerlet which is available almost everywhere so just for fun let's uh, shoot these balloons at about 15 yards Trust me, it's a lot of fun. Now friends, I want to tell you about something that we're going to be offering. We have a collection of wild game recipes. And for those of you out there who like to eat the game that you may uh, harvest in hunting, well, we may have some answers for you. So send $5 and a stamped self-addressed envelope to Wild Game Recipes, care of the shooting show, 554 Kings Highway, Shreveport, Louisiana, our zip code is 71104. Remember, $5 for a collection of wild game recipes and send a stamp self-addressed envelope to Wild Game Recipes, care of the shooting show. Again, 554 Kings Highway, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71104. It is September, 1988, and the world's attention is focused on Seoul, South Korea, where thousands of athletes are assembling for the games of the 24th Olympiad. Among them are 26 men and women representing the United States as members of the U.S. Olympic shooting team. Like all athletes who reach the Olympics, the American shooters have had to make many sacrifices while dedicating themselves to their sport. And while a few Olympians may gain recognition or financial rewards from their achievements here, most, like the shooters, have made those sacrifices in pursuit of less tangible but no less significant rewards. That's why members of the U.S. shooting team deserve special attention from anyone who still understands and appreciates the original spirit and ideals of the Olympic Games. And that's our goal, to look at athletes who have dedicated themselves to a sport where the true spirit of amateur competition remains alive, and to witness a triumph of dedication. Though shooters seldom get much attention from the general media, their sport has been one of the most enduringly popular in the Olympics. Since the modern games began in 1896, shooting events have been held in every Olympics except two, 1904 and 1928. In recent decades, shooting has attracted more participating nations and athletes than all other sports except track and boxing. Over the years, Shooting is also proven to be one of the most difficult sports for an individual to dominate. Only 11 shooters have won two individual gold medals, and no shooter has ever won more than two. Among the two-time gold medalists are four Americans, including two in recent years, Gary Anderson and Lona Swigger. Not surprisingly, Americans have done well in Olympic shooting. In fact, American shooters have won more medals than athletes in all other sports, except track and swimming. 
So members of the 1988 Olympic shooting team are certainly part of a proud tradition. And in looking at these men and women, it's easy to see why shooting might be described as the world's most democratic sport. Because no other sport produces Olympic level competitors who differ so much in age and size and in their backgrounds. The youngest member of the U.S. shooting team is a 19-year-old college student from Tennessee, Scott Sweeney, a shooter since the age of eight. When he took the USJC's BB gun safety education course, Scott has been competing in his event, running game target, since he was 12. In contrast, the senior member of the team, 52-year-old Don Nygord, didn't even start competing internationally until he was 42. But he certainly made up for lost time. And in 1988, Don is one of only four Americans competing in more than one of the 13 shooting events, men's free pistol and air pistol. Another American entered in two events is a 25-year-old former high school gymnast and cheerleader, Lonnie Miley. A resident of the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, Lonnie has spent at least 24 hours a week preparing for her two events, women's standard rifle three position and air rifle. Dan Carlisle, a 32-year-old Californian, has spent more than half his life as a competitive shooter. A bronze medalist in trap in the 1984 Olympics, Dan will be competing in both trap and skeet events in Seoul. Another veteran of the 84 team, 44-year-old Eric Bullyung, is entered in the air pistol event, which is making its debut in the 88 Olympics. The great majority of shooters find all the personal satisfaction they're looking for in club activities or in state and regional tournaments. But some will aim at higher goals and begin to take the first steps on a long and difficult road. The road may start in a field in the Midwest, or in the foothills of the Rockies, or in a shooting range in a large city. But no matter where it begins, with enough discipline and dedication, it may one day lead to a distant land where athletes will assemble for the games of a future Olympiad. Stay tuned for more of the shoot and show after this break for your local cable company or television station. This is Larry Pratt with a commentary from Gun Owners of America. Waiting periods can be dangerous to your health. Take, for example, these cases. Bonnie El Masri of Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Mrs. El Masri was threatened repeatedly by her husband who had a long record of abuse. On becoming convinced in March 1991 that her life was really in danger, Mrs. El Masri went to buy a gun. She was told that she would have to wait for 48 hours. Between the time Mrs. El Masri tried to buy a gun and the end of the 48 hours, her husband killed her and her son. Igor Butorsky was a Jewish refugee from the Soviet Union back in 1983. He went into a retail furniture business in Brooklyn with a partner, and the two of them decided that they needed to keep a gun in the store. Weeks went by, and the New York City police had not decided 
to allow Mr. Butorsky to protect himself with a gun at his store. He was killed during a holdup. Four months later, his partner still had not gotten a permit for the gun. Catherine Latta of Charlotte, North Carolina, had had so much abuse from her boyfriend back in 1990 that she decided that he would kill her if she could not protect herself. Desperate, she went to buy a gun and was told that the police check would take two to four weeks. I'll be dead by then, she said. So that day, she went to the bad part of town, as she called it, and bought a gun on the street. Later that night, a homicidal boyfriend broke through her barricaded door. She saved herself by shooting him. In Gainesville, Florida, during 1990, there was a serial killer on the loose in the university town. Anxious residents of Gainesville were told by the sheriff that they could go to the next county and avoid the waiting period in force in Gainesville. But what would people do if there were a national seven-day waiting period? The answer is obvious. Just wait for the killer to come to them. If even one life can be saved, gun grabbers tell us, we should legislate infringements of the right to keep and bear arms. Let's use that same principle and insist that since waiting periods have cost lives, they should be done away with. Friends, we ask you to consider joining us, Gun Owners of America, to help you retain your rights to keep and bear arms. Our address for the national headquarters is 8001 Forbes Place, Suite 102, Springfield, Virginia. The zip code is 22151. Our phone number is area 703-321-8585. And now we're going to play a little music for you that we think you'll really enjoy. And we're very pleased to present once again Mr. Les Humphrey. And Les, what you going to do for us this time? I'm going to do a little song that I picked up in Nashville when I was up there doing some recording. It's called Good Head on His Shoulders. Well, I think everyone's going to enjoy it. He doesn't look like a man of the town Without you he wouldn't stand out in a crowd But he knows what he's got and what he needs And that's a lot more than I can say for me And he's got a what he needs and that's a lot more than I can say for me and he's got a good
Mr. Les Humphrey. We want to thank our good friend Les Humphrey for being on our program. And listen, friends, if you would like to be on our show with some sort of music presentation, please give us a call at the shooting show. Our phone number is area 318-222-8515. If you're like me, I bet you remember the first time you went out with Dad to shoot your new 22. Hi, I'm Grit Gresham. I've been shooting and hunting now for a lifetime. But this old 22 is a rifle that will always have special meaning for me. So this Christmas, see the folks who will steer you right. Whether for son or daughter, they'll help you select a gift with a lifetime of memories already built in. For the best selection and expert advice, see the real pro in your community. Jerry Ahern, gun writer, holster expert, and best-selling author of The Survivalist, The Free Man, The Takers, announces the Ahern Tri-Speed Shoulder Holster, ambidextrous, large adjust from 45 autos to 44 mag revolvers, Wonder 9s too, small adjust from rounding high power to chief special, suede line black ballistic nylon, speed, superior retention, adjustable thumb brake, extra safety strap, uses a pull-through, a double lockdown, keeps the gun in the holster no matter what, Holster, adjustable harness, and double mag pouch, removable without removing your coat. Large mag pouch also carries 20 round extension magazines. Remove for belt carry. Holster can be worn without mag pouch. Specify large or small. Retail $62. Add $4 shipping and handling. Send check, money order. Visa or MasterCard to Ahern Enterprises. P.O. Box 186. Commerce, Georgia 30529. Visa and MasterCard orders only. Dial 1-800. 285-1245. That's 1-800-285-1245. Have your credit card ready. Act now. You know, friends, Handgun Quarterly has been one of the best strictly handguns magazines available for some time now. But Handgun Quarterly is now handgunning. And with editor Sherry Collins' contributions, they have a terrific new magazine that all of us will really enjoy. It's a bi-monthly with articles by Wiley Clapp, Charles Petty, and Dick Metcalf, to name a few of the fine gun writers who are writing for Handgunning Magazine. For subscription information, call 1-800-777-0012. Take a look at Handgunning. You can't go wrong. You know, friends, Shooting Times Magazine has been such a huge help to our program. And I can truthfully say, I've been reading Shooting Times for at least the last 15 years, and it just seems to be getting better and better. They have terrific articles every month on long guns, shotguns, rifles, and handguns of all types. So if you want the absolute best in a monthly general shooting information magazine, pick up Shooting Times. You know, I often find myself going back and reading copies that are even several years old, and they're still as interesting as when I read it the first time. So for subscription information, call them at 1-800-727-4353. Shooting times, the best there is. I'm Jerry Ahern. I'm here again with my friend Mike Holloway. And Mike, how the heck are you and I wearing the same clothes? You had an explanation for that, didn't you? Well, all I can say is for 13 years, yeah. Hoss, Pa, and Little Joe wore the same clothes for 13 years on Bonanza. So we can wear the same clothes. Yeah, on the shooting show. Wherever. Wherever we <laughs> <Yeah>. go. <laughs> there we go. We can just we can be out for thirteen years too. That's right. And I'll wear red and you can wear brown and That's blue. That's right. You got it. There you you go. got it. And I you did uh, change my Yeah, gun I saw belt. you changed yeah. your gun belt there. Yeah. You changed yeah. your gun belt. Well I've added a few notches to my No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. But now you got we got some more really super fine collectible colts here. Tell us about them. Well Jerry, this time I brought down um, some factory engraved Colts, which are rare and really sought after. We have a pair of factory engraved Frontier 6 shooters. Now these are kind of rare in the fact that these are not consecutive numbers. Mm -hmm. They are a matched pair in the same shipment, and they were ordered that way from the factory. Uh, they're not consecutive numbered, and most of your matched pairs are consecutively uh -huh. numbered. So that makes them kind of a rarity. Those are beautiful. Thank Those you. Those are beautiful. And what about, uh, can I ask you, what is a special style of engraving? 
this is just your standard uh, standard engraving. American traditional engraving. Great. Yeah. yeah. What's the next that we've got? Well, right here we have a gun of that has been pictured in two publications so far. Oh, I remember you telling me about yeah, this. Yeah, this is a 3840, and it's one we call the April Fool Colt. It was shipped uh, April 1st, 1929, and it has no patent dates on the frame. Not and the gun, thing. the gun has survived the ages. It's in virtually 99.9% yeah. condition. It's a, it's virtually a brand spanking new gun. Uh, factory oddities are mm -hmm. really sought after. This is a four and three quarter inch 3840 caliber. Now, I, I noticed something here. You said a gun. Uh huh. This is not a gun. Well, now Colt, Colt made uh, quite a quite a few things. Yeah. This is just a, uh, a Colt knife. It was made for Colt in Sheffield, England. It's stamped Sheffield, England on the on the blade. That's a nice looking knife. Well, I thought it was kind of odd. Uh, you would not think that no. to get a knife from Colt. Mm -hmm. They've made holsters. I know that. Holsters, now I know yes. they made oh, knives. Yeah. yeah. I'll bring a I'll bring a holster and show you next. I'd time. like to okay. see that. I'd like to see that. What else we got here? Well, we've got a, an old hog leg here. Yes. This yeah. old plow handle was shipped out to San Francisco in 1903. Pacific Hardware and Steel was the receiver's name. Uh, four and three quarter, 45. That's really sought after by people who just want to play with a dog-eared old colt, and that's a dog-eared old that colt. That is a dog-eared old colt. It's got a lot of character there. I bet you if this could tell some stories, it could tell some really good ones. We would be spellbound for hours. I think we would. I think we would. That's part of the romance of collecting, oh, isn't yeah. it? Every gun has a story. It all ha they all have a story. Now, what about these? My favorite barrel length there. Seven yeah, and seven and a half. This is a seven and a half inch 45, made about 1959. It's a, it's a nice old gun. Uh, it's just your standard run of the mill, uh, mm -hmm. seven and a half inch 45. These were shipped in a black box. When you have the original box with these guns, it makes them a little more desirable. In which we have the the original box for that one. Oh, outstanding. And this one. This is a second generation uh, 44 Special. These are very rare because they didn't make that 44 many of them. 44 Special. Huh? And 44 Special, that's correct. Most of your barrel uh, calibers were uh, 38 and 45. Uh -huh. And cu uh, your customary barrel length was 5.5 to 7.5. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and uh, anyway, the 44s are, are, are rare. They're hard to come by in second generation. Oh, I would think so. Yeah. I would think so. Last time we were together, you were uh, giving a couple of pointers for uh, people who are interested in Colts. You got any more suggestions for them? Just buy all you can get. Just buy all you can get. Well, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Okay. We want to thank Mike Holloway for being on our program today and doing his interview with Jerry Ahern. And if you would like to contact Mike, uh, if you have a question about collecting, he might be able to help you. Write him at Mike Holloway. Post Office Box 3245, Knoxville, Tennessee. His zip code is 37927. The Shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or television station. Friends, you're probably not going to believe this, but you better. You're looking at the incredible Fort Knox gun safe, and this has to be as pretty an appliance as, as I think I've ever seen. The paint 
on this uh, Guardian 600 safe is just beyond description. As you can see on the front of the safe, we have a beautiful mural featuring an elk and some Rocky Mountains, and this thing is just beyond belief to actually see it. This safe retails for over $2,000, and when you see it uh, up close, you'll understand why. In fact, you'll think it ought to cost a lot more than that. Well, guess what? One of you lucky viewers is going to have this safe in their home as soon as we pull your name out of the hat in the drawing we're going to have for this Fort Knox safe in sometime in late February. We'll keep you posted. So please, if you would like to have this beautiful Fort Knox gun safe, send your entry postcard to Fort Knox Gun Safe Giveaway, The Shooting Show Incorporated, 554 Kings Highway, Shreveport, Louisiana. Our zip code is 71104. Let me repeat that. Send your entry postcard with your name and address on it to Fort Knox Gun Safe Giveaway, The Shooting Show Incorporated, 554 Kings Highway, Shreveport, Louisiana. The zip code is 71104. And friends, trust me on this one, as I like to say, this is an incredible deal, so get your entering postcard in today because we want one of our lucky viewers to have this safe soon. I'm Tom Cunningham, and I'm from Dallas, Texas, and um, I am part owner of Anvil Media Companies. Uh, that's five studios and two complexes, as has been advertised before, Real to Real Studio and Good Night Dallas. Um, basically, we do lots of major commercials that are both regional and uh, nationwide and even some local stuff. But Dallas is pretty much, um, they claim to be the jingle capital of the world, but since we're on nationwide TV, that we might get some argument about that, but we do a lot of them anyway. We're fully digital, um, state-of-the-art, uh, cutting edge of technology, whether it's to do commercials, or if you're a, a musical artist and you're looking for just top-notch recording, uh, we can do it to the point that if you put out a compact disc, it can say DDD, digitally recorded, digitally mastered, and digitally mixed. Uh, now, friends, we appreciate so much Tom Cunningham's participation in our show and his assistance. If you have a song you want recorded or music or a commercial jingle, uh, please give Tom a call out at Real Real Studios at 2545 North Fitzhugh, Dallas, Texas. Their zip code is 75204. Their phone number is area 214-827-7170. The best quality at an excellent price. You're looking at the world's most powerful production revolver, the 454 Kasul by Freedom Arms. The 454 hurls a slug at 2,000 feet per second, one ton of stopping power, twice the power of a 44 Magnum. To show you just how powerful a 454 actually is, we offer a couple of head-to-head -head comparisons. In our first demonstration, Dick Kasul fires a 44 Magnum at a 3 8 inch thick slab of steel plate. The 44 Mag makes a dent, but the 454 at the same range blasts a hole clean through. Okay. Let's see that again in slow motion. Now Dick will fire a 44 Magnum at an 8 inch block of duck seal an extremely dense material used to test the penetration capability of firearms. A water jug has been placed behind the block. The 44 slug hits the duct seal with enough force to knock the jug over, but the slug doesn't go through. It's a different story with a 454. It blasts a slug through the duct seal and ruptures the jug. Here it is again in slow motion. And how about this? The 454 fired at a gallon can filled with water blows apart the can and shatters the cement block it's sitting on.
We've proven the power of the 454. Now we're proving that we produce the finest accuracy in any revolver manufactured. To substantiate this claim, every premier grade will be shipped with a target showing a five-shot group fired from each individual chamber. The long-range accuracy and power of the 454 has made it a favorite among growing numbers of NRA silhouette shooters. Here, Larry Lindsay of Rocky Mountain Trails puts on an amazing display of the long-range capabilities of the 454. Larry knocks down ram silhouettes offhand at 325 yards with an iron sight 7.5 inch. This gun has been carefully designed with the emphasis on versatility. Most handgunners are discovering the felt recoil of the 454 is less than that of many of the 44 Magnums. The popular option that further reduces felt recoil is to have the gun magnaported. This is a 10 inch 454 Fasool that has been magnaported. When I was in Africa, I took a 454 that had no magnaporting. And after five weeks of shooting with it and shooting with this one, I can tell a substantial difference. The world's finest gunsmiths, utilizing state-of-the-art machine tool technology, make the 454 Kasool and the complete line of Kasool single-action revolvers the world's finest handguns. Crafted from the most durable, heat-treated stainless steel, these guns are masterpieces of precision. Freedom Arms has developed a special technology that provides a chamber-to-bore alignment of five ten-thousandths of an inch tolerance. This extremely close alignment ensures superb accuracy and performance. The cylinder and all major components of each handgun carry the individual serial number of each gun. While the 454 is the flagship of the Freedom Arms line, the same precision and quality is available in 45 Colt or 44 Magnum models. And also now in 22 Rimfire models and also soon to be available in 357 Magnum with spectacular performance capabilities. Freedom Arms, Freedom Wyoming. And we want you to remember our good friends at Shotgun News, the trading post for anything that shoots. They feature 35,000 firearms bargains. They have 36 big issues for only $20. Shotgun News, Post Office Box 669, Hastings, Nebraska. The zip code is 68902. Their phone number is area 402-463-4589. For MasterCard and Visa customers, for subscriptions only, call 1-800-345-6923. Shotgun News, order now. Don't put it off. Now, friends, if you want information regarding silhouette shooting, contact our good friends with the International Hand.